Jesus went to the tomb where he had been buried only to find that the stone had been rolled away and the tomb was empty. Friends, we gather here as Christ's disciples on the first day of the week to celebrate the good news of the gospel. Jesus Christ has risen from the dead. been lighting candles during Lent that represent the fruit of the Spirit, peace, forbearance, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, and love. And now we light the Christ candle, the candle of joy. Please join me in the call to worship. Rejoice and be glad. Rejoice and be glad. Heaven and earth will never be the same. Rejoice and be glad. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Let us sing our opening hymn, Jesus Christ is risen today.
God is present to guide our journey and eager to forgive us when we go astray. Therefore, in humility and faith, let us be honest and open before God and neighbor. Let us pray. Lord, we acknowledge that you are the awesome origin of creation, the constant within humanity, the bringer of light into darkness. Let the light of your love shine across the world this day, in every continent, in every nation, for every people. Let the light of your love shine in the dark places in this world and within human hearts. We acknowledge before you the freedom that Jesus' death and resurrection brings to our lives. By your grace, we have received a great grip, life in a new creation, shaped by the words, actions, and death of your Son, and fueled by the ongoing work of the Holy Spirit. Today, we ask your mercy for those times when we have been less than grateful in words and actions that have caused hurt to others and in our apathy toward the suffering of others. Only by your generosity can we know the comfort of your unconditional love and know ourselves free to make amends. Within your heart, we are always your children. Help us make a place for you in our own hearts as Lord of our lives. Amen. Friends, hear the good news. The faithful love of the Lord never fails. God's mercy never ends. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Living God, by your Holy Spirit, open our eyes to see the new light of this day. Open our lips to tell of the empty tomb. Open our hearts to believe the good news. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our first scripture reading is Psalm 118, verse 17 and verses 21 through 24. Listen for the word of God. I won't die. No, I will live and declare what the Lord has done. I thank you because you answered me because you were my saving help. The stone rejected by the builders is now the main foundation stone. This has happened because of the Lord. It is astounding in our sight. This is the day the Lord acted. We will rejoice and celebrate in it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Unfortunately, again this year, we couldn't have our... Easter egg hunt time, but um, when we did this a couple of years ago, I should have Elizabeth do this because you're really good at this. I usually, we bring our Easter egg story, or Easter story egg, I guess is the right way to put it. It's a kind of a Russian doll type egg, and there's of course a thing to go with it, a reading. And there is an egg here for each of the days of Holy Week. And of course, we start off with Palm Sunday, which was a week ago. On Palm Sunday, remember our Lord Jesus is the King. Praise him for all his goodness and the hope he always brings. This Sunday story egg reminds us how Jerusalem honored God's son. He is the vine and we are the branches. Through him, our victory is won. Ah. 
Jesus came into the temple on Monday, Jerusalem's house of prayer, he was surprised by all the people and upset by what he found there. There were lots of buyers and sellers. It had become a marketplace. The temple used to be holy, but now it was a disgrace. When you see this Monday story egg, think of God's house of prayer. Remember the amazing miracles and the teachings that he shared there. Jesus knew what he needed to do. He went back to the temple. He taught the good news of God, and a crowd began to assemble. He taught them that the greatest commandment, life's most valued goal, love the Lord with all your heart, love him with all your soul. He taught them to love their neighbors just as they love themselves, and to care for the poor and needy, and those not like ourselves. Let this Tuesday story egg Show how Jesus taught us love. Remember you are cherished by your Father up above. A woman came to the home of Simon and she brought a beautiful jar filled with expensive perfume, her most treasured possession by far. She poured the perfume on Jesus, covering him with love. She showed this act of giving, honoring her father up above. The disciples were upset with her. They confused her giving with greed. She could have given to the poor and others who were in need. As you look at this Wednesday story egg, every day when you wake, choose to honor your holy God with each decision that you make. getting harder to see these, isn't it? For his very last supper, Jesus gathered with his friends. They shared a feast, and he explained his time was soon to end. He washed his disciples' feet with a servant's heart. He would love his friends until the end, although they soon would part. Let this Thursday story egg remind us Jesus is the way. Share the good news with your friends and be thankful every day. I'm going to get real teeny tiny. Early in the morning, Jesus was bound and led away. He had been charged with lying. The Romans would have their day. Are you king of the Jews? Jesus replied, you said it. Crucifixion would be his punishment. It's God's will, so I accept it. He brought Jesus before the crowd, Pilate did. Shall we let this man go? But the priests had convinced the people, so the people shouted, no. He knew, Jesus knew his death would happen, yet the earth began to shake. He paid the price for our sin. He suffered for our sake. As you look at this Friday story egg, see the cross as a symbol of love. It represents everlasting life, a gift from your Father above. Jesus had been wrapped in linen and covered in perfume. His friends prepared his body and they laid him in a tomb. Imagine a very large stone, far too heavy to roll away. This rock was placed at the entrance of Jesus' tomb that day. Hold this Saturday story egg. It mo looks much like a stone. With the Lord Jesus as your friend, you will never be alone. Ah. Of course, as the new day was dawning, the trees began to sway. An angel of the Lord appeared and rolled the stone away. Friends went to visit his tomb. They brought burial spices of plenty. But when they arrived at the cave, they discovered his grave was empty. Easter is Jesus raised from the dead. He's our hope and joy, our life's daily bread. Jesus arose from the grave to him be glorified. For Jesus has arisen. Yes, Jesus is alive. Let us uh, repeat after me prayer. Loving God, Loving God we, give you thanks we give you thanks for Jesus, Jesus. Whose, death whose death and resurrection show us how much you love us. 
and your promise of eternal life. Amen. Last Sunday, we heard the story of Jesus' entry into Jerusalem. It was a heady moment, but one filled with dread. For like all the prophets before him, Jesus was eventually arrested, tried, found guilty, tortured, and hung on a cross. On Good Friday, Jesus breathed his last, and his body was taken down and buried. The women followed to see where his body was placed and went home to make spices and ointments. Then came the Sabbath, the day of rest. We pick up the story from Luke 24. Listen for the word of God. Very early in the morning on the first day of the week, the women went to the tomb, bringing the fragrant spices they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they didn't find the body of the Lord Jesus. They didn't know what to make of this. Suddenly, two men were standing beside them in gleaming bright clothing. The women were frightened and bowed their faces toward the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He isn't here but has been raised. Remember what he told you while he was still in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners, be crucified, and on the third day rise again. Then they remembered his words. When they returned from the tomb, they reported all these things to the eleven and all the others. It was Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary, the mother of James, and the other women with them who told these things to the apostles. Their words struck the apostles as nonsense, and they didn't believe the women. But Peter ran to the tomb. When he bent over to look inside, he saw only the linen cloth. Then he returned home, wondering what had happened. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now, according to Luke, the women who were the first witnesses on that first Easter were so amazed by the experience, they just had to share it with others. You know how you, when you've read that really great book or you've seen a really great movie, you just have to tell somebody about it. I imagine the women who shared that experience at the tomb with the other disciples were just as excited. Perhaps one was enthusiastically telling the story and the others jumped in periodically to fill in some of the details. And when the other disciples heard the testimony of the women, what was their response? Was it, praise God, hallelujah? No. Their words struck the apostles as nonsense and they didn't believe the women. Nonsense or as we find in other translations, an idle tale. Leros, that's the Greek word that Luke used in his gospel. There are over 138,000 words in the New Testament, and yes, somebody has counted them all. And this word appears just once, a unique word for a unique event, Leros. Now, sadly, the translators have done us a disservice You see, they've tried to tame the gospel by giving us an acceptable, less harsh, less offensive phrase to translate Leros. Their words almost sound poetic, an idle tale. But idle tale doesn't even begin to capture what Leros means. It's the root of the word delirious. Think of the last time someone told you a story convinced it was true. And you were just as convinced it was a complete lie and that they were out of their mind. Leros. I guess today we'd say fake news, nonsense, drivel, garbage. Better think of another two-word syllable I can't say here in church. (laughs) That's the best translation of the word, Leros. And that's what the other disciples thought of the women's testimony. 
Now, I would suspect there are some who would agree who would find the whole idea of resurrection to be pretty far-fetched, especially in this age of science and reason. Well, for you, Luke's account is good news. See, you're not alone in thinking that way. Most of the disciples found it pretty unbelievable, too. The women go to the community of their closest friends, the people who are in the best position to know, the people who have heard the same teachings of Jesus, who witnessed the same miracles and healings, and those disciples call the women's testimony Leros. By the way, the reason the other disciples didn't believe the testimony wasn't just because it came from women. You can find other writings from that time that actually made that very claim. Oh, it was the women. And yes, even today, some find the testimony of women to be less reliable. How long, how many years did it take for the women gymnastics claims of abuse to be heard and acted on? And how many other women's testimonies have been dismissed by men in positions of power in this hashtag Me Too era? But in truth, no matter who had brought the word to the disciples that Easter morning, their response would probably have been the same. Because resurrection is so unexpected, so outlandish, so impossible. What the women had to tell, what we have to tell, about what happened that first Easter is so ridiculous that even people we know best would not believe us. Being highly skeptical of this whole resurrection business is frankly entirely expected and a reasonable response. So if you have trouble believing this story, good for you. Keep on questioning. But don't stop hoping. And for those here today who just accept that the resurrection happened, no questions asked, Luke's account should cause us to stop and really consider what is being reported. Friends, if you don't find resurrection at least a little hard to believe, you probably aren't taking it very seriously. We're talking about a person being raised from the dead there wasn't some kind of resuscitation. Nobody was administering CPR. Nobody was standing by with charging paddles saying, clear, and then zapping Jesus' body. I've been a hospital chaplain, and I've been present when somebody coded. And everybody rushes in, and the chaplain gets the heck out of the way. It looks a bit like it does on TV. It's pretty miraculous when they can get that person's heart going again. And it's very discouraging to everyone when they fail. But that's not what Luke is describing. Jesus has di died. He has been buried. It's over. It is finished. The disciples are hiding, probably making plans to go back to Galilee once it's safe and return to their old jobs. And the women are on their way to the tomb, bringing spices to prepare the body, which was their duty according to the custom of the time. No one in their right mind is expecting resurrection. It's unnatural. But then God loves to break all the rules. Now when the women go to the tomb, it's not just mourning. It's very early in the morning. The word there is bathos, like bathosphere. You know those diving chambers that go real deep into the ocean where there's almost no light? Everyone is in the dark. The women, the other disciples, all of Jerusalem, the whole world, all creation. In the dark. The women carrying spices come to the tomb and find that the stone has been rolled away. For them, there is nothing except an empty tomb, which leaves them more in the dark and adds to the mystery. 
What finally shines light in the darkness is a simple instruction from the two men who suddenly appear. Remember. Remember what he told you while he was still in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners, be crucified, and on the third day rise again. The women, fully disciples of Jesus Christ from the beginning and part of his inner circle, have been present when Jesus told them way back in Galilee what was on the road ahead. They had been present throughout his ministry. They had been present when he was crucified. They had been present when his body was buried. But grief and pain have blurred their memory. How many of us have lost a loved one? someone we care deeply about and found in the midst of grief we are unable to do even the simple tasks without help we're numb we're in a fog kind of like the walking dead and then Jesus uses an empty tomb and the word of two messengers to jumpstart the women's memories. Claire, chunk! And they remembered everything his teaching, his healing, his feeding, his caring for others. And they couldn't keep it to themselves. They had to share their tale with others. Then why do we tell this Easter story again and again? Maybe it's to imprint the words in our memory for a later time. When some experience leads to some recall, which leads to faith and testimony. Rarely are we aware of Christ's presence in the midst of life, whether it is a joyful time or especially during struggles. It is only in looking back that we can recall God was there bringing about new life and new hope in the midst of loss, whether the loss of a loved one or a job or a marriage or whether we have lost hope in the midst of despair. Maybe that's why the two men tell the women, why do you look for the living among the dead? The promise of resurrection is the power of life. It is the power of love, God's power over death and sin and evil. It's volunteers making vaccination appointments for seniors who, who aren't too sure of the technology for signing up. It's handing out bags of food to people in need and gift bags to the residents of nursing homes who have been lonely from isolation for this whole past year. It's sending money to sisters and brothers in Texas struggling to rebuild lives after a devastating storm. And it is sending help to all those around the country and the world through our One Great Hour Sharing offering and so many others. This is the story we have been following since last September as part of the narrative lectionary from Genesis through the whole Old Testament through Luke's gospel. The good news of the overwhelming power of God's love. It's the story we tell every Easter. Actually, we tell it every Sunday. And if we have trouble remembering, if tragic events in our lives have caused us to wonder why, we have the collective memory of the church to help us through these times. Retelling the stories to us, praying the prayers we struggle to utter, sharing their own experiences of God's love, and through it all, giving us hope. Now, I'm not asking us to walk around with smiles all the time as if nothing bad ever happens. We all bear the scars of suffering and pain and loss. But they are not the final word. Because at the heart of this idle tale about resurrection is the God who makes the impossible possible. The one who breaks all the rules who turns the world upside down, the God who is love. And it is the God who gives us the gift of faith, not to understand the mystery of the resurrection, 
but to be inspired to hope and trust it's true. And then to be inspired to share this impossible, unbelievable, nonsense story with others, not just through words, but through lives of loving service. Thanks be to God. Amen. In the back church of the church somewhere is an offering plate. Um, we're not going to go around and distribute the plates, but uh, on your way out, I would invite you to um, put your offerings there. And we also have another plate for um, the Gracie Banks because we'll start collecting the Gracie Banks and any other uh, envelopes for one great hour of sharing starting today, but for the next several weeks. Uh, and I thank you again for your generosity and uh, faithfulness. And in response, I invite you to... Uh, Pray with me the prayer of dedication printed in the bulletin. We praise you, O God, and give you thanks that you have given us such joy, such grace, such hope in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Let all our words and actions, our love and service, bear witness to your resurrection power. Amen. We will be celebrating the Lord's Supper, uh, communion, or Eucharist is the ancient Greek word for it, which means Thanksgiving, and uh, you will need your bulletin as we go through this. Uh, please uh, join me responsively. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It in every time and in every age, O oh God, it is good and faithful that we give you thanks. For your mercy is sure and your steadfast love endures forever. In your compassion, you gave us Christ Jesus, who sets us free from death and leads us to life eternal. And so with all creation, with all the needy and hungry ones, with all those who have enough and plenty, with creatures great and small, with sun and moon and stars, and with the saints of every age, we praise your name and join their unending hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, O God, creator of all things. By your power and love, you continue to deliver your people from bondage. Thwart the, the designs of evil, show the way through the wilderness, turn hardship into righteousness, and reveal your hand upholding the just. Blessed are you, O Christ, servant of the universe. You came among us to feed and heal and teach, to confound the haughty, to confuse the deceivers, to challenge the wrong-hearted. And in all these things, to give hope to those who long for peace. We give you thanks that the Lord Jesus, on the night before he died, took bread, and after giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, Jesus took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant, sealed in my blood, poured out for you for forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Remembering our Lord's self-giving love, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. 
Christ will come again. Blessed are you, O Spirit, giver of life. You give us words when we have none. You fill us with vision when we have the most need. You give us voice to proclaim our faith in every hour. Be our guide and teacher today and always. Come now, O Prince of Peace, Spirit of Love, Breath of Life, bring to all this hurting world the joy that the women knew that first Easter morning and teach us to proclaim with them the good news of our risen Lord. May this joy show forth in our daily living. In the unity of the Holy Trinity, in gratitude for this great day of resurrection, we praise you, God of all that is, now and forever. Amen. As our Savior Christ taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. This is the bread of life. Let us eat. Friends, this is the cup of salvation. Let us drink. Folks have said there's a new ritual now. It's the sounding of the popping of the cups. <laughs> Friends, we have been fed at Christ's table, and so please join me in the prayer after communion printed in the bulletin. Gracious God, we give you thanks that by the witness of your word and the sharing of this meal, you have opened our hearts and eyes to the presence of Christ among us. Now send us forth from this place by the power of your spirit to tell this good news to the world. The Lord has risen indeed. Amen. Our last hymn is Christ is Alive, which we will stand and sing.
Friends, the stone has been rolled away. Christ is risen. Love wins. With joy in our hearts, thanksgiving on our lips, and a spring of hope in our step, let us go and serve the risen Lord. And as we go, may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you today, tomorrow, and forever. And all God's people say,